All right, hey guys, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. Last time I talked to you, we were going over the design for our new fish retailing area, where the koi pond was gonna go, the water monitor was gonna go, and all that kind of stuff. So I handed that design over to Chris and the rest of the Aquascape team. Let's see how they're doing. They're supposed to have walls up and working on the constructed wetland filter for that space. So let's check it out and see uh, how far the progress is. All right, Chris said he already got started on building some of the fish retailing stuff back here. No, <laughs> he's not kidding. Check this out. This is gonna house maybe 13 different tanks. Nice, Chris, moving right along. Now these are the old fish retailing yeah. systems that we used outside. I originally designed these things to be three feet deep. Let's just check these tanks really quick and see how deep the water is in these guys. 18 inches. <laughs> That's it? That really makes me rethink the depth of this. Today I would like you to make a decision. I think you're going to 27 inches. 27 inches it is, until I change my mind. Yep. <laughs> So as you guys can see, we are starting to do a little bit of woodworking here back in the fish retailing experience area. We got Micho, we got Juan, we got Matt, we got the other Matt and myself all working on trying to get bones to this project uh, completed today. We've already created the six by six perimeter as you can see behind me. Now we are starting to frame out all the little compartments. You're gonna see a lot of woodwork going on today. We've got some foam insulation that's gonna go down on the floor as well as on the back wall, not only for padding, but also to help insulate the water. This concrete that's down here can get fairly cold, so we're just trying to take every precaution we can to help maintain water temperature consistently. We're going to be securing things to the floor, to the brick wall back behind me, so a lot is going to happen today. The guys and I are gonna work feverishly to try and get this done, so can't wait for you to see how this is getting put together. All right guys, we're just adding some reinforcements to this wall because as beefy as it is, there's gonna be a lot of weight on the water pushing against the liner so it could push this wall any direction. So we're doing our best to keep it in place with these uh, L brackets, heavy duty bolts going into the concrete. So we are at a kind of a critical point in the project. First of all, what do you think of the progress that we've made so far? It's coming along. I'm glad we went with the timbers. You know, we could have used wall stone. I was worried with how long this was gonna go. Was that wall stone gonna push over? So this is gonna be the trough where all the fish sit. On this other side, this is gonna be our pump area over here. Plumbing will run through here. And then this huge area from here all the way down to the end is gonna be a giant wetland filter. Wow. By pulling this wall out, it looks like six more inches. We got two aqua block panels in here. Centipedes running from here all the way down and then a snorkel down that way. So pump feeds the centipedes, water comes into the centipede, then up through that first layer of aqua blocks, and then this whole thing is gonna get filled with rock and gravel. And then I'm thinking like if we did some kind of like pergola type structure with grow lights coming down into this wetland filter and actually oh, cool. get some live plants cool. out of here, yep. that'll at least soften this up. Mm -hmm. So we're coming along. This is good practice because we're gonna do this exact same thing over there on a much larger scale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you've been following along with the progress, you've, you've seen that we have framed this thing out. We've got everything skinned with our plywood right down here inside and outside of this wall. Here is our wetland filter. You can see we've got the snorkel and centipede already ran down through it. This is actually gonna come up. I just wanted it here for illustration purposes. It also helped us figure out where we're going to put some of our tiebacks. 
which we've notched out here, which will attach over to that sill plate running along here. We are gonna pull the snorkel centipede up. We're gonna get fabric, liner, and then more fabric in here. Then we're gonna go ahead and lay our snorkel down, about three inches of gravel on the bottom to level everything off. Put fabric over the top of that, then wrap our centipede in fabric, and then fill up to the very top of this snorkel centipede, the trough on both sides here and here with gravel and then we'll fold that fabric back over the top and then we're gonna throw our aqua blocks down and then we'll put more gravel on top of that. That is how we are going to create our wetland filter. It's a little bit different because we can't dig down so we have to fill the void space on the two sides of the centipede in order to raise that level up in through here and then over here in order to get our aqua blocks set on top of that centipede. Join us along for the ride as we try and figure out those challenges. Let's keep rolling. Okay, what'd you guys just do over here? Look at look at the camera. First, we did the first underlayment of fabric underneath the liner. Good. Then we put the liner, which you can see, we put staples right here so it sticks. Then we put the liner, then we did another piece of insurance right here, mm -hmm. another piece of fabric. Top of the liner, we're gonna cut another piece so we can cover the centipede, start putting gravel in. Cool. Things are moving along here on our fish retailing system. We've got our snorkel in, which means the centipede is in. Aqua blocks are moving in. Let's turn this around. So a little different than normal. You can see our centipede down. Normally this trough would be dug out in the soil. The whole purpose of the liner is if I ever want to clean this, water will suck down through the layer of gravel that goes over the top of this, hit that liner right there and then everything gets channeled into the centipede. When I wanna clean it, all the debris that's in that rock and gravel will move down through the aqua blocks, down through the centipede, and then to a convenient snorkel spot where I can drop a sump pump down in there and pull the debris out that way. We'll have to do that probably once a year, but this whole bog filter is gonna overflow. We'll raise it with water, then overflow through some pipes that'll discharge out and this area back in through this trough, which has not been lined yet for the fish. Something I'd be interested in is what's your guys' opinion for what we should do as a backdrop to this. I don't wanna see the white wall. I'm not a big fan of the black fabric, even though the black fabric looks better, I think, than that. We talked about even adding our stacked slate walls up to a certain point. Maybe having come, somebody come in and just paint that. A mural would look good, but money, money, money. Yeah, let's get that horn in there. Keep honking, there you go, perfect. So we have the bones to the wetland filter for part of our fish retailing system done. I'm gonna have the pond professor himself, Ed Ballou, here explain to you exactly what goes into a constructed wetland filter, what those components provide as far as fil biological filtration goes. Why did we design a, a biological filter so big for a pond this size? So the whole thing with this, because it's a fish retailing system, it is not like a standard pond. We are gonna be overloading this thing with fish. Plus we're open to the public. So we're gonna be bringing in adults and children and everybody wants to feed the fish. So they're gonna be coming in, they're gonna be throwing fish food in here. It's gonna create a lot of waste. That waste product is actually toxic for the fish. So we wanna get rid of it as quickly as possible. The best way to do that is through biological filtration and that is this. Is there a simple formula that people can follow? Typically, I go off of the surface area of the pond. The larger the pond, the smaller the percentage. For a basic standard koi pond, I'm typically about 25% of the surface area of the pond is gonna be the wetland filter. For a recreational pond, people are gonna be swimming in it. It could be 30, all the way up to 50% of the surface area. The other thing that we have to look at is if you're raising fish. Aquaponic systems, people that are really, really big into their koi, 
aquarium, they want to have large fish and they're going to be feeding them a high protein diet. So you're always looking at the percentage of protein. The higher the percentage of the protein, the bigger your fish are going to get. The protein's going to pack on the weight, but the protein, as it breaks down, it's going to create ammonia. So we want to break that stuff down and we want to detoxify it because ammonia will completely eradicate all the koi in this pond. So we have ammonia on one end. As it gets broken down, it goes from ammonia to nitrite. Nitrite, the fish can handle a higher amount of it, but it will still end up killing it. And then it gets broken down again through another series of biological actions that'll turn it into nitrate. Nitrate is off gas through uh, anaerobic respiration. It will also be removed by algae, which is why I don't like eradicating algae 100%. I like a little bit of slime inside of there. Nitrate will also be consumed by aquatic plants, which will help to complete that nitrogen cycle. So in this gravel bed, you look at that handful of stuff, 360 degrees around it, each and every piece of gravel will become home to microorganisms. Those microorganisms are super, super powerful. So what we have here is a giant colony of living microorganisms. All the waste product is gonna be accumulated inside the aqua blocks. Okay. So this is where all that stuff will settle out down here on the bottom. So now we have clean water that's gonna flow up through the aqua blocks. But what this also does, it's gonna distribute the water evenly. This is a really, 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 I can't even stress how important this little component is because it spreads the water out evenly and we have a good contact of all the water flowing gently up through the different layers of gravel. So this is a huge, wastewater treatment plant basically is what it is guys first of all that's why we have this gentleman in the house the man who developed this entire system we pitched our centipede it's higher down there than it is down here at the snorkel so that all the sediment that traps in that bottom three inches of that sediment chamber when we're doing our clean out with our clean out pump that's sitting down in there can all be sucked down because that's the lowest point so guys and girls out there i know that's a lot to take in my my head is swollen right now but i love it because uh, again i learn so much every time i hear this guy talk this is the most important part of the system wouldn't you agree Ed? oh but like by far yeah it's going to lower the maintenance overall if you don't have this set up properly you're going to be fighting it you're going to be doing water changes you could have fish health issues you're going to be constantly vacuuming material and sediment and stuff out of the water if you set it up properly it's going to lower your maintenance the fish are going to be happier, they're going to be healthier. Everything just works. That's it. I believe him, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but this is something that you can't fudge on out there, folks. Um, so really understand the importance of biological filtration. Understand how to appropriately size uh, constructed wetland filters. Understand the waste load that you're going to be creating. So we're going to go ahead and wrap the video here, folks. That was a lot of information to consume from Ed Ballou, as well as to see the entire process of the construction of this wetland filter. Stay tuned for the next installment of this long series about the creating the fish retailing experience. In the next video, you'll expect to see this entire system completely finished. So until then, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Stay in tune with all the latest content from Team Aquascape. Head on over to Ed the Pond Professor's channel if you haven't already. Please leave us a comment. Let us know how you th felt about the video. All right, folks? And if you got any questions, hit up this guy. Peace.